Hi friends, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and I'm going to show you today how I'm working the front post double crochet and back post double crochet with burnout velvet. I'm finding that this is a great stitch to use the velvet for. Since the velvet is super soft and cozy and a little bit slippery, um, as I've played around with it, I've enjoyed using this front post uh, stitch because it lays a little bit flatter with this yarn. So as you can see, the pattern is exactly the same on either side of the scarf. So let's get started. Um, the color that, that, would, that I just had in my hand is called Terracotta Rose. This is the uh, blush pink. And I think you'll have an easier time seeing what I'm doing. Now I'm just going to be doing a you know, just a sample swatch for you. Um, and you, just so that you can customize your scarf to however wide you want. So it really doesn't matter what number of chains you make. It's completely up to you. Just chain to the width that you would like your scarf to be. So I think for today's purposes, I'm just going to do a small chain so that you can um, so it won't take too long for me to explain. Okay, so I just have a number of chains. I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to go into the third chain from the hook. So don't count the loop on the hook. Count this one as your first, your second, your third. I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. I'm going to yarn over again just pull through two and yarn over and pull through two again. That is what is called a double crochet in US terms. And I'm going to work double crochets across the whole chain. That will be your first base row. So I'm pulling through two, pulling through two again, yarning over, inserting my hook, pulling through two, pulling through two again. And another reason why I like to use this front post double crochet, because as you can tell, finding those little chain spaces are pretty tricky in this velvet. The velvet is fluffy and a little bit hard, so finding your hook to wrap around the post is much, much easier. Um, so here we are at the end of the row. I'm gonna work one last double crochet. Now I'm going to chain two and turn the work towards me like a page in the book and start the next row and I'll start with my front post double crochets and what that means is basically you want to insert your hook so that the post pops forward. Now you never go back around this one that you're just right above. Don't work around that one. You're going to yarn over work over to the next one. So you should very easily see the hole that you need to work around to pop that post forward. Yarn over, pull through, and complete your double crochet just as you were doing. Yarn over, insert your hook so that the po post pops forward and continue on down the row. Now when we get to the end of this row, that's when I'm going to stop and keep an eye on exactly how many front post double crochet I made and then just remember that number. So going forward, in case I'm distracted by watching TV or something, you know, as I'm crocheting along, I can double check and make sure I've got the same number of front posts or, you know, posts that I'm working into throughout the whole project. So I'm getting here towards the end and the last post is the one before that chain two that, you know, that we started with. Well, it wasn't a chain two, we, we skipped two and worked into the third chain from the hook. So here we are as we have those chains. We're not going to work them as 
a, I mean, we are going, going to just insert our hook underneath them, still a big hole or whatever, and just pull through and make a regular double crochet. So that one doesn't necessarily pop forward. It is, it's um, just wrapped around those chains. So let's make sure how many front posts we did. I'm not going to count that turning chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so that's the number. I'm going to always want to make sure I've got eleven. And then see, because then you'll also have those two at the ends. So total of thirteen. Okay, so same thing. I'm not going to work around around this post. Skip that first one. Okay, but now this time instead of what we're going to do it's uh, if i popped this forward i wouldn't get that smooth look so this time i'm going to want to turn the work over towards the back and poke this is called the back post because i want those posts for four rows to lay on the same side um, of the work so that you get that smooth look so i'm going to work down those 11 things and what you're going to see is that that um, the the line will form on this back of the work so now it's a back post double crochet because we're into entering you know back to popping those to the back okay Oh, I really hope I'm not going too fast. I hope you know how to have done a double crochet. That's all this is. Okay, I'm coming to the end. And I don't want you to get confused, but we're going to just work around that last one. And you'll notice um, those chain twos right there. We still need to work underneath those. This is a tricky one to skip when you get busy. So you've, and just start working the project. This is an easy stitch to miss. You've got to work that regular double crochet in order to keep the same amount of um, post work. Chain two and turn. Now we're back, we're creating that, that nice smooth look. We're gonna just pop them forward. This is our third time we're gonna do that. Okay, so I'm hoping you've got the hang of that because what I'm going to do off camera is finish working this row and do one more row and then I'll show you how to, you know, pop the work back out so that we'll get the alternating stripe look. Okay, you've got this. Okay, I have finished up my four rows and going forward, what an easy way in case you... Um, lose track of counting or whatever, you'll just want to make sure you've got those four braids that kind of run across the back. Then you'll know you've done your four rows. Turn the work. Because sometimes I find it tricky to count one, two, three, four as you keep going. So here we go. We've got our four rows. Now we want the work to be opposite. So as you probably can tell, we're not going to be working post, uh, poking that forward. Let's start with that back post double crochet back that way. Now we'll alternate. And that's how you're gonna get the stripe now running across the other side of the fabric. Oh, and I just can't say enough how, you know, usually if I, I've, I've done a basket weave blanket with acrylic and I love that blanket. I love the look of it. I used Karen Simply Soft However, it is a very heavy blanket because a post stitch really does take up quite a bit of yarn. And so it makes things a little bit heavier. But with this velvet being so lightweight, because really there's just a tiny string running through and then it's, you know, and then the little puffs, I don't know, the little fibers are poking out. I think that's why it's working with this post stitch and why it is laying flat and it's just, I, I don't know, I just, I, I'm absolutely in love. And I might do another basket weave blanket with this yarn because I know it would turn out absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so now here I have, I'm starting that, that front post, that was my first row, and you'll see it here that now 
um, now I've got those lines going more vertical. And then I think you're well on your way. So while I have you just for a few more minutes, I just want to thank everybody for following us along. On Instagram, we are at Daisy Farm Crafts. My daughter, Hannah, and I just love to share what we're making. I'm the hopeful someday to be grandma, and she's the hopeful someday to be mom. And that's what started us just kind of crocheting. Um, well, it started me crocheting in hopes to become a grandma. And we just can't believe that, um, you know, it turned into a little business for us. And we are just so happy to have you along. We do our best to try now and answer your emails. Your, please forgive us. Um, our account really has gotten huge, <laughs> almost more than we can handle. We have roughly 16 million viewers on Pinterest every month, and that has definitely upped our our emails and comments, and sometimes I just feel so bad I can't get back to all of you concerning, you know, what is the best yarn to use or, you know, for your certain project. So um, please forgive me on that. I hope that there are many crochet groups that you can join. Um, I, I, I mean, still, don't be afraid to email, email me with questions about the specific patterns and things, but... Um, just know that there's a lot of you now, and um, I feel really bad. Sometimes I can't just give that personalized attention that I've been used to doing. But we still just please know that we love each one of you and are so grateful that you are coming to our website to learn more about crochet. And thank you for sharing your projects with us so that we can share them with others. It is the most inspiring thing. I've heard a lot of people just pick up a hook and start learning to crochet. And that makes me so happy. And that's because of all of you fellow crocheters that love it and um, and let me share. So anything, hashtag Daisy Farm Crafts. Find us on Instagram. Find us on Facebook. And even the YouTube channel and here on our blog. Okay, good luck with your project. And we will see you next time.